Hey golf people, in today's video we're going to explore the secret to getting the most out of your Garmin R10 launch monitor, especially as it relates to indoor usage. Now, if you've seen my previous videos on the Garmin R10, you know that I absolutely love the unit, especially at the price point that it sits. However, I've thought indoors it struggled with long irons and with woods, but I think Garmin has finally worked out all the kinks and it's really, in my opinion, Fixed. I'm going to put it up head to head in this video with a launch monitor that's 10 times the price of this Garmin R10 and we'll see just how close the numbers will be. So in today's video we're going to explore some really important questions. Firstly, is it worth getting a Garmin R10 in 2023? This device is now a couple years old. Is something coming down the road from Garmin that we should be looking out for? or is this the best we're gonna have for a while? Secondly, has Garmin fixed its indoor issues? We're gonna put it up head to head, like I said in this test today. We're gonna see if with a long irons and woods especially, are those spin numbers going to be right and are those carry distance numbers going to be accurate? Thirdly, we all know the new Rapsodo MLM2 Pro is coming out. It is the hottest and most anticipated launch monitor in this price category to come out since the R10. Is it worth waiting for that one or is the R10 still going to be my pick here in the spring of 2023? We're gonna answer all those questions and more on today's video as we go through our testing. Now, before we get into the testing, I do wanna say, if you're considering buying a Garmin R10, there's no better place to do it than my friends at playbetter.com. They've got the best pricing that you will find on the internet for brand new Garmin R10s, as well as slightly used and open box items. In fact, on today's video, I will be using an open box Garmin R10 to do our testing. They've got free two-day shipping across the continental United States, and they've got a hassle-free 60-day return policy. So if for whatever reason you're not satisfied, you can exchange it or get your money back. To be quite frank with you, they're just literally the best people in the golf technology business. Highly recommend them. I've got some links down below if you want to check them out. All right, guys, now getting into the secret of getting the most out of your Garmin R10, here is my recipe. It's a three-part recipe. Firstly, setup. Setup is so important with the Garmin R10 and there's a few steps that you'll need to ensure you take every time to make sure you get the most accurate numbers out of your Garmin R10. Firstly, you need to ensure that you are running the latest firmware. As I predicted, Garmin has continued to roll out software updates and improve this device over the last couple of years and you've got to make sure that you're running the latest stuff. The second most important step is to make sure you've got the right distance of the unit behind where you'll be hitting. You need between six and eight feet. I put mine at seven feet. That way I have a little wiggle room in front and behind in order to hit my balls. Now the next thing that a lot of people miss, I think, is to make sure that the Garmin R10 is sitting at mat height. Oftentimes mats are an inch and a half, two inches thick, and if the Garmin device is not up on a book or up on another mat of similar height at the same level that you're hitting, you're gonna get results that are not optimal. So make sure you get this thing at mat height. And lastly, you'll wanna make sure that you calibrate the device. It's very simple to do that going into your Garmin Golf app settings. You hit calibrate, you wait a couple of seconds, and you are good to go. So getting the setup right is the first and most important step here in the process. Step two, in terms of the secret to getting the most out of the R10 is to use Titleist RCT balls. RCT stands for Radar Capture Technology, and it allows Doppler devices like the Garmin R10 to get a much better picture, especially when it comes to spin. And spin, again, is a huge part of the calculation when it comes to carry distance with these launch monitors, especially when you're not getting a huge amount of ball flight data to go off of. In my simulator setup here, I've got 10 feet between where I'm hitting it and my screen. But with the RCT balls, it captures the data much more efficiently and much more accurately. And it is an extremely wise investment. I'll leave a link down below to those as well. They'll last you a very long time, especially if you're not using them outdoors. So between those two things, you can get really accurate results out of this thing, even running the standard Garmin Golf app. But the third secret is really the icing on top. And my third secret is to download and use the awesome golf software. On top of 
all of the great things that Awesome Golf is capable of, it also makes the R10 as accurate as it can be. If you remember my original videos and my original testing, especially when it came to accuracy with the R10, I said that I thought Garmin's algorithms and calculations were just slightly off and tweaking those, you could get much more accurate numbers. Well, Awesome Golf really has seemed to dial those algorithms in and the numbers to me really become spot on using this software. So between those three things, that's the secret sauce to getting the R10 to be as accurate as it can be. Now let's put it to the test up against my Launch Pro and see how accurate that is. All right, guys, well, we have calibrated the Garmin R10. It is behind us, seven feet. I've got my Bushnell Launch Pro over here, and we're gonna just compare the data. First off with a nine iron here, we're gonna see what this thing can do. All right, so pretty good strike. I'm showing a nice high kind of baby draw there with the R10. It finished just a little right of target, and that's also what Awesome Golf is showing me here. Now, if we dive into the stats though, First off, ball speed. Ball speed was 95.5 on Awesome Golf, and it's 96 on the Bushnell Launch Pro. Launch Pro always rounds either up or down, so that's right there, basically. Awesome Golf telling us we've got 124.9 carry, and 125 is the number with the Bushnell Launch Pro. The total distance isn't so important, generally, but it is 133 with the Launch Pro and 133.6. And the reason I say it's not a huge deal is because every launch monitor is calibrated differently with roll settings. That's really encouraging to see right off the bat how close those are. Now, if you've watched my previous videos in the R10, the spin number is something that I've always thought the Garmin R10 had a little trouble calculating, especially indoors. With all the software updates and with these RCT balls running Awesome Golf, Awesome Golf is telling me spin 7514 and we're getting 7,600 there with Bushnell Launch Pro. I've found it to be within, oftentimes very close, within 25 RPM, and I haven't seen it deviate more than 100 RPM as I've been testing all day, even before we started rolling the camera here. So second shot here with a nine iron, then we're gonna switch over to a seven iron and show you that. Now that one I definitely pushed. <laughs> That one's pushed out to the right. We'll see what Awesome Golf is telling us. Yes, it's also telling us pushed off to the right. Let's see what the data is telling us. So Launch Pro said ball speed, leaving the club is 94. Awesome Golf says 93.9. Bushnell saying carry 122. Awesome Golf saying 121.3. The total distance, 129 with the Bushnell, 129.4 with Awesome Golf. That is crazy on point right there, guys. In terms of spin, Bushnell is telling us 8174, and look at this, 8194 with Awesome Golf. So guys, those are the types of numbers and consistency I've been seeing all day. I'm gonna switch over to a seven iron here. All right, I hit that club just a little right of target. I also hit it just a little thin. My distance is down, but let's see how these two read it. So, carry 140 and a half with Awesome Golf, 140 with the Bushnell Launch Pro, total 155.2 Awesome Golf, 155 with the Launch Pro. That's scarily accurate considering this device is $4,000 and the R10 behind me is $600. In terms of spin, spin numbers with the Awesome Golf R10, 6,012 versus 6149, 120-ish RPM difference there. Let's hit the seven iron one more time here. All right, much better strike. Now, as you can see, it's a little left of target on the Bushnell Launch Pro. On Awesome Golf, it's showing just a little right of target. We'll start with carry 158.7, Awesome Golf 160 with the Bushnell Launch Pro, so 1.3 yards difference there. Total 170.3 versus 167, three yards difference there. Spin 5581 with Awesome Golf, 
56.99. So again, just a little bit over 100 RPM between them. All right, now we're switching over to the five iron here. We will be swinging a couple drivers here in just a second as well, but so far, so good. I'm extremely impressed. Here we go, first shot with the five iron. Definitely pulled that one a little bit. Good contact, but I pulled it. Again, on Awesome Golf, it's showing it's off to the right there. So this is our biggest discrepancy so far. Carried 176.7 Awesome Golf, 166 with the Bushnell Launch Pro. Total 196.6 Awesome Golf, 186 with uh, Bushnell Launch Pro. Spin though, still real close. 36.56 with Awesome Golf, 37.75 with the Launch Pro. I'm just gonna slightly move the Garmin because I think maybe it's just not perfectly aligned. And that's why we're seeing a couple of those go off to the right when they really should be to the left. But let's, let's test that. Here we go, five iron. Now that one I did hit to the right. <laughs> you can see on the Launch Pro, I've even got a little fade to it. And I would say awesome golf there, maybe a little bit, well, it's just about the same actually. So I think making that little adjustment definitely helped things. I'll try to hit one more left here before we move on. Carry 172 with Bushnell versus 174.8. So again, we're within basically two yards there. Total 187 Bushnell, 188.3 with awesome golf. Spin 48.57 versus 49.75. These numbers, guys, continue to impress. I do want to hit one more because I want to make sure we hit it left now that it made that little device movement. Let's see if that changes things. That one's definitely heading left. I hooked that one on purpose. And it did go left there on Awesome Golf. A little bit more pronounced, I will say, on the bush now. But still, we're seeing a draw and definitely left of target there with the five iron. So I think the little change I made worked out. In terms of carry 180 versus 148, that's a big difference though. And 199.6 versus 171. I'd say it's somewhere in between there to be quite honest, but uh, there's really no way to tell. In terms of spin 3504 versus 3649. So guys, last test, we'll hit a couple here with a driver. Okay guys, I hit that one in the middle. Carry 211 with Awesome Golf, carried 214 with the Launch Pro, total 234.9 Awesome Golf versus 257 with the Launch Pro. Again, I can't stress it enough, carry is so much more important than total rollout. Spin was a little lower on both of those shots, 1488 RPM with Awesome Golf versus 1549 with the Launch Pro. Spin I always thought was higher with the Garmin R10 than it should have been. And this is actually airing on the lower side, so really interesting results, way closer, way closer than the R10 has ever been by a long shot. This is pretty scarily accurate, like I said, guys. I'm gonna hit one more, try to get my swing speed up because it's for you faster swing speed players. This is gonna make a bigger difference. I definitely did there. I think. <laughs> Push it just a little right. Both monitors saying the same thing. Carry 220 with Awesome Golf. Carry 219. It's a one yard difference, guys, or one and a half, I should say, 220.5 versus 219. Total 235. So my rollout number is definitely lower with the Awesome Golf versus the Bushnell Launch Pro. Bushnell says 252 rollout. Spin 3777 versus 3575. So that is our biggest difference there in terms of RPM, about 200 RPM, but still 
real good guys. Well guys, what do you think of those results? I am blown away by the accuracy. I'd love to know what you think down there in the comments. Now, covering some of those questions we talked about earlier, is the Garmin R10 still a buy? I think it's absolutely still a buy. It's gonna be a lower price point and much lower when you think of lifetime costs of the system than some of the new stuff that's coming out. I really think that the R10 now is as accurate as a device like this can possibly be. Just not gonna be able to get better accuracy than what I'm seeing here today. Garmin's still actively updating this thing, making it better, tweaking it all the time. I think you can really rest assured that this is not gonna be rendered obsolete anytime soon. So it's still a buy for me here in spring 2023. Guys, there's a ton of great technology launching this year in 2023. I made a video all about it, breaking it down, showing you what's existing on the market and what's new and which way I think you should invest your money. Check it out and I'll catch you back here very soon on another edition of Let's Play Through.